Jack and Jill here. Oh my goodness, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Jack Jill Show. I never know what you're going to say. I know, that's why I had to do that. <laughs> Entertaining real estate investment advice. One that's of us anyway. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Jack Butella. <laughs> I'm Jill DeWitt. And we're broadcasting this week again and still from sunny California, but it's going to change next week. We it's going to be some fun. Going on the road. Yes, we are going on the road. Today, Jill and I talk about what we learned from HGTV and then we turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should do I that with like, all TV. You know, it's funny. It's, it's uh, HGTV. I don't know how they do it, but they did it. Food Network, I've seen this happen. Weather Channel, I've seen it happen where like there's people that they, it's on 24 seven. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of those channels. And it's, what's funny is with HGTV, especially it's not exactly who you'd expect who has it running in the background constantly. Oh, you mean like people? Yeah. People, oh, like re- regular yeah, like, people. Yeah, like, like, okay, like a, you know, like a stay-at-home mom or something, you know, who's like looking longingly at wanting to redo her kitchen. I expect her to have it on yeah. 24-7. But like, I don't know kickboxing guy I don't expect <laughs> him to have it on 24-7 but some of them do yeah because uh, I hear them you hear th- don't you hear people talking about you know what they saw on different shows or different things and I'm like there's no way you know that unless you were watching HDTV you know I have <laughs> the same issue with people who drink wine like there's all these what? unsuspecting wine drinkers out there the people you think oh. you think they'd be like a shot of tequila person. Yeah. But no, they know way, way too much about yeah. wine. It's kind of strange. Maybe That's it's California. funny. I love it. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the jackjill.com online community. It's free. It made me laugh because I was just thinking about, I have a friend that taught me a long, long time ago that white zin is for cooking, not for drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that might have been true a while ago, but I'm not sure that's that's the case anymore. I don't know. A good chef might might argue that, <laughs> or a good wine drinker might argue that. I think a good chef would say, "Leave your whites in and out of my food." Well, maybe that's it. I don't know. Just don't. That's drink a whole it. different podcast. Yeah. So, um, hey, all, I'm Travis. I've been through the oh, good. I've been through the cash flow from land online training program twice. I have studied real estate for over a year and recently sent out my first mailer. A business partner and I have been getting calls left and right, but no deals quite yet. It's only been about two and a half weeks. Yeah, it's coming. Anyway, just got off the phone with a seller who's got a substantial amount of one acre properties around the country held in a trust. He inherited them and doesn't want them anymore. He's moving to Italy and is ready to offload them in one package deal for cheap and doesn't care if we make a large gain from them. Q, major due diligence. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. So to keep this brief, I-E, T-L-D-R, I don't know what that is. I don't either. Okay. Have not yet completed a start to finish real estate deal, but very familiar with the process. Have consumed, like everything, Jack and Jill put out in several real estate courses, books, videos, etc. And two weeks in someone calls with a very large deal. Yeah. Would have to get creative with the financing, right? Um, we were prepping for smaller deals, but wondering if we might consider diving in deep after doing the due diligence. Want to avoid some pitfalls. Yep. I'm inexperienced in doing deals, but I've got confidence and training. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. This is exactly how this is supposed to work. Yeah. Therefore, and finally, my question is, <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. Do you guys have any tips on how not to biff this? on your very you know, on yeah. our very first go around I would deeply appreciate a nugget of advice from your collective years and experience don't want to be naive and mess this up thanks so much for your invaluable time and input Travis K so I would run through so good I would get a list of the properties and I would run through the du- due diligence on parcel facts and I would check spot check I would do all this in the less than like 10 minutes. Spot check 10 or the properties or so and see what kind of properties they are. Some of, hopefully they're infill lots and there were some dough. If that's the case, go on to deal board, which you're a part of, and make it known that you have this deal. I pro- chances are there's a uh, fairly, there's a delay between when these questions get asked and when they, when they, this actually airs, right? Mm-hmm. Chances are you've already done this, I hope. And um, if there's some, a bunch of money 
involved that that's to be made off of these there's nothing but people in this group right Jill mm-hmm. that are ready to just come in including us mm-hmm. I love these kinds of deals and fund them I, yeah, I'd fund it and then partner it and all that. I mean, I would personally love to see this. Here's a couple points that I would make since he's new is spend the time. Let's just say there's 50 properties. Could I sit in one day and go through all 50? Yeah. You know, and you will too after a few. You're like, oh, same subdivision. I know that. Oh, same subdivision. Yeah, right. That. So hopefully that there's some that are like that. You can really kind of go through and do it. Um, check the little details to check the back taxes. Just see where they stand. Check and make sure if there's an HOA. You know, you gotta so spend some time. Make you know, make sure you have a good understanding about all these properties. Um, figure out what you think they're worth. You know, um, you know, you know how to do the math and work it backwards because you're you're doing this right now with us, Travis. And then finally, like Jack just said. You can negotiate a better deal if you take all of these off this guy's hand in one transaction, and that sounds like what he wants. So maybe they're worth, maybe they're all worth, let's just be, you know, throw something out there. Maybe that's worth $100,000. Yeah. If, they're, if your margin is north of a hundred grand, yeah, I would not do this myself if you're brand new. If this is your first deal, right. you really do need some help, all kidding aside. Right. Yeah, that's true. And whoever you partner with... They can do it with you. Go yeah. through the double tweak it, you know, and and, and uh, be an extra pair of eyes for yep. you and with their experience, go through them. But, uh, I mean, you can really negotiate. I don't really have a percentage to, to throw out to you, but I can just say that, you know, a lot of people are ready just to cash out, walk away. It's kind of like, it's kind of like I'm walking away from a... Yeah, I'm trying to think. The end of the garage sale. Imagine the end of the garage sale. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're staring at, that's half broken. No one wanted that. No one wanted that. You know, okay, great. Now I'm going to have to haul, I'm going to pile this all into my car because I got to get it out of here. Or wait a minute, this guy just rolled up and said he'll pay this stupid price, but take it all off my hands. Heck yeah. That's kind of how I feel this might be for this guy. Mm-hmm. You know? You might be at the end of the garage sale. <laughs> well, I here's think the thing. A good price. I don't want to complicate this because what you want to do is you really want to act quickly. Price it. Mm-hmm. Price it so that you know you're going to make a bunch of money and he's going to be okay, the seller, mm-hmm. and get the deal done. You don't want to say, be saying, "Oh, what if we try this? Oh, what if we try it?" No, you want to get get in there. And, and don't and don't you know if he's if you say you want eighty percent of them or whatever it is, get the price so good that you're just going to take them all off yeah. his hands. You don't want to leave him with three because he's not going to be that thrilled. Or about any it. really. Exactly. You want you we, want. We do that all the time. Take them all. We'll take them all. We'll have it done on Thursday, but here's the price. And, right. And ninety nine percent of the time they say yes. And Actually, don't probably a hundred percent. Don't forget, Travis. Tell him that you're gonna throw in all the closing costs. Factor all that in, because that's something that they don't know how to do or want to do. And you're the you can do this. They just want you to solve it for them. Yeah. Make it so flipping like easy for him. Sounds like price doesn't matter. a good deal to be. That's a good position. That's what how you make the male work for you. It's perfect. Sad. I thought you were gonna say the women work for you. What? <laughs> what? That's how I make the what work for me. What? That's <laughs> how you make the male work for you. That's right. M A I L. Thank you. <laughs> Today's topic: what we learned from HGTV, and then we turn it off. Of course, this is the meat of the show. So, Jill, as Jill alluded to earlier, there are some people that it's just an addiction. They love to watch people fail at renovating houses. <laughs> Sometimes they show like, hey, they show a lot of success in there, or at least they, I think they try to. You think you think it's a failure thing? If you live under a rock and you don't know what HGTV is, Home and Garden TV, mm-hmm. it's a collection of shows where, mostly reality shows, where people renovate properties. You know, they, they buy a house. They, they used to show the numbers like, oh, we bought it for 400 and just cleaned it up for 80 and sold it for 540. Why is that, Jack? That Why do they never show the numbers yes, anymore? Yes, what happened? They made me I mean, mad. I, I only can guess and think that the lawyers, got, got involved. lawyers got a hold of it and said, you know, you shouldn't. I know this whole thing's a big, huge lie, oh. and that's fine because it's TV, but you might want to just leave the numbers out of it. The blatant damn lies. <laughs> just leave it out. <laughs> blatant damn lie clause. <laughs> oh my gosh, I want that. <laughs> Why did you marry them? Because they passed the blatant damn lie test. <laughs> blatant damn. So, each, so lots of, some of these shows are fun. That's my new little thing. I'm writing that. We should call a show. How to how to smoke out blatant damn lies. <laughs> There's lies, damn lies, and the statistics. We've talked about it on the show before. I love it. Thank you. I did write that down. 
So people go on the show and make a, quite a name for themselves, quite honestly, and they clean up houses or so they say they do. So you get to see the before and you get to see the after and, and usually they they throw a dash of who bought the house at the, as an end user at the end. And I it so what do I learn from this? That's what the show's about. I learned that I never want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that it's just a heck of a lot easier to buy a piece of real estate for just a lot less. Negotiate a better deal on the on the front end and then just buy it. Here's here's what you don't I was have thinking to ever about. get any tools out or talk to a contractor and just resell it. Here's here's my here's my two cents here on HGTV and all that stuff. The bottom line is it's not as easy as they portray it it's to TV. be. Let's all really take a step back and think about that. Come on. I mean, sure, five minutes later I own it. No, it's sped up for TV. You know, and you didn't see all the fights that went on behind the scenes, by the way. All the awful stuff. That was taken out. You know, they might allude to the 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 roof issues. They didn't, sh- you know, maybe they don't show it caving in in the back <laughs> you know, or collapsing. I mean, I don't even I think don't it's know. that real. But you don't. I think it's all scripted. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. We could have done it. Like some of our renovations. Oh, I see what you're saying. This, how they mm-hmm. walk through the whole transaction. I, I think mean, it's we could have made them look good. Repairs and the whole thing. Oh. Here's my whole point. That could be. And that's, be. that's really my point. What I learned from HGTV after, we've renovated a few houses, Jill and I, together, and it was a mess. I mean, we made money, but it was a mess. Mm-hmm. It's way, way, way easier to learn from what they do and just not do it. It's so much easier to send a ton of letters out uh, and buy property for 75% of what you can, in the same condition the house is in. Buy it for seventy five percent of what it's worth, or eighty percent, and just resell it for a regular price, mm-hmm. a regular for, you know for sale price, without ever actually going walking in the house, without ever changing carpet or paint or anything. You know what? So so to 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 piggyback on that, I made a note. That was my my positive thing about HGTV, which is I think that or I hope it at least gets folks thinking about what is possible and other ways to make money in property like you're just saying and then hopefully inspires the right few to take action yeah exactly joe so that's my whole point what you learn from it is yes there's money to be made absolutely if you control a piece of real estate and you know that it's going to be worth more when you're done then your job is to kind of make make when you're done easier and faster right and so if you don't have to renovate the thing at all, you just spend all your time concentrating on buying cheap property instead of renovating the ones that you do buy, you just, you're going to end up with way more dough. That is the business model for a typical lender. You know, lenders make, the more money they lend, the more triage they make, the more money they make. Mm-hmm. So learn from that too. What if you're an investor? Let me just run this by you. You understand this, okay? You, you get it, you know it, you're doing it but your wife as a hobby really wants to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot out there like that. They just have it. Even it's really kind of a hobby. (laughs) Do you think that there's a place for that? No. Oh, I don't. (laughs) I don't think there's a place for that at all. In fact, that's even worse. When, when you start to, it's your hobby. If it's your hobby, then I would start a side business as a decorator and get paid for your hobby. Oh, and not, all right. not risk it yourself. Or I would do your own house where you're actually going to enjoy it. Because in the end, when it's your hobby, you're going to say, God, if we just spent 20% more on this kitchen, it would just it would knock everybody's socks Isn't off. Isn't that you're funny? You're just going to price yourself out. Just, I don't care. That's the reality. I don't, I don't care how good you are with all this stuff. If it's your hobby. I had a hobby business one time called huh? Jack's Classic Cars. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I dismally that failed go? at that. Terrible. Oh, really? Yeah. How many did you have? Lots. That's what I'm saying. And, Apparently, you did well. I, the business did well. You didn't. I lost money. <laughs> I lost my butt. Yeah. Is what happened. Is that Because I'm why you're all in that. love with cars, you know? Jack's classic cars. <laughs> Jack's personal classic car collection. It was a terrible yes. business idea. I see. So, and it's because it was my hobby. You know that funny? I have to share on that. Okay, so we were in a hotel room, um, I don't know, six, two months ago, and you were flipping channels. And what is the channel that you stopped on? The the automotive, whatever they call it. What is the new 
car I think channel. it was a speed channel. Maybe that was it. But it, you, that's what they were doing, sitting there, going out, finding and restoring classic cars and selling them for more. Mm-hmm. And you were you were like binge watching that. I, I was glued to that. Yeah. <laughs> and they were one after another. It was just on regular TV, so. I remember. It was, they were one after another, so I wasn't show. the only guy. Yeah. It was, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jill's really nice way of saying on the air that I was not a lot of fun on that, that trip. No, that was wasn't it at all. No, 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 no. No, that was your version of HGTV or your version of this. We don't have TV at home, no. so anytime we go somewhere. Right. Here's what happens with Jill and I when we go out in public. <laughs> oh, no. It's usually for like sport games and sport bars oh. and stuff, and we meet people and friends, and so I haven't seen a TV commercial oh, in a year, probably. This is true. You know, or if we have, it's been in those spotty places like in a hotel. It's true. So, and Jill we're like and I glued to the TV. Glued like, to these, <laughs> and we're like, wow, that's a, everybody's looking at us like we're just idiots. Like, exactly. What are you guys paying attention to these commercials for? <laughs> like, I've never seen that. <laughs> it's so true. We probably look like we were like from another planet. Right. Uh, and it's a toothpaste commercial. Exactly. Or something. It's really silly. Mine is the smoking ones. I'm like, what the heck is it? Are these smoking <laughs> commercials that are coming up now? It's hilarious. Exactly. Thank you. Well, you've done it again. <laughs> Wasted another, I don't know how many minutes, listening to the Jack and Jill show, and those are minutes you'll never get back. <laughs> <laughs> Join us in another episode, in the next episode, actually, tomorrow, where we talk about houseacademy.com. <gasps> and it's coming. And we answer your question, should you have one, post it on our online community, and you can find it through jackjill.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I love when you say like this is this is what happens when we go out in public. I'm like we embarrass ourselves. <laughs> like well, I was waiting. I'm sure that happens. I was waiting. Sure. I always thought that's how you were gonna <laughs> follow that up. That was really really no, good. No, you know we just. But it's true. I've I've caught myself and I feel like I, I I look like a rude. I don't mean to be rude, but I look like a just a distracted whatever uh, person here. I'm I'm glued to the stupid TV. <laughs> You know, it's a holiday season now, too, so everybody's Christmas shopping, so there's there's a lot of commercials, like good ones, new ones. Yeah, like the car commercials, a lot amazing. of car commercials. Yeah, car commercials. They all have a bow on them, and I'm like, right. what is that? I've never even seen that. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, share the fun by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you're listening, and while you're at it, please rate us there. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.